Hey guys, so we're going to play a game called Outer Wilds. It's pretty nice. Alrighty, so I already did do a uh, expedition on here, but we're going to start anew so you guys can get filled in on the story and see what happens. Uh, yeah, why not? So this game is very, very interesting because, like, you'll you'll see, it's pretty cool. So um, there's really no need to, you know, resume an expedition and you'll figure out why because I mean you can start all, all over and it'll be exactly the same you know no matter you know, how long you've played it wow this game is pretty that's our pilot back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars I see so it's launch day Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program and suddenly here you are, living on your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. Let's see how systems go. I'm ready if you are. You're sure you fixed the retro rockets? That was only a problem one time. And then maybe a few times after that. But hey, no reason to dwell on the past, right? I don't know, Slate. Anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from the. Ah, you need to get the launch codes from Hornfells at the observatory before you can lift up. Just bring those here once you said your goodbyes or whatever. Thanks, Slate. Ooh, I can roast a marshmallow. Let's do that. Ah, use right stick to move it and then extend. Then extinguish it. And let's see. <laughs> Alright, that's a heck of a noise. Alright, cool. Uh, sleeping bag. All this stuff. Okay. Ah, hold and release to jump. Ah. That was some pretty music. Hmm. What's this all about? Oh, Porky. Hey, oh, Hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gozen open a bottle of the good stuff. I'm only seeking adventure amongst one star, actually. Other stars are too far away. The good stuff is less delicious. It's less delicious sap wine and more daunting digestive challenge. Uh, we'll do this one. Another metaphor ruined in the name of scientific, uh, scientific accuracy. None, nevertheless, I hope you enjoy your travels. Good luck. Thanks, Perfy. Or Porky. Porky. Yeah. Actually, they're blasting off on that thing? Huh? They really don't explode as often anymore. I told my odds survival statistics statistically quite high. All I know is between the space program and Micah's model rockets, things seem to burn to the ground around here more than they used to. Thanks for time. Huh. This projectile is linked to our Sky Shutter satellite. Sky Shutter satellite which is currently orbiting Timberhurt. The satellite is equipped with two onboard cameras. See if you can take a snapshot of the village. Hmm. Seems like we're coming up close to it. Yep. There's everybody. Nice. 
What else they got here? That looks interesting. Ooh, what's that thing? Yep, doesn't seem like there's anything else here I can look at. So that's cool. So it's lunch day, huh? How's gonna miss you? Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and the, plat and the platform those ships launch from is getting old. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? The big tree in the village would be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program. Just say the word. The current launch pad is fine, thanks. Nice try. We all know you have it out for that tree. The launch, the launch pad is flammable? <laughs> What? No. I just think it's in the way and someone ought to chop it down, you know? Specifically me. Haha, uh -huh. you think this is... This has to do with the time I fell out of it and broke my arm? That was when we were hatchlings. Who would hold a grudge for that long? Anybody else to talk to here? Get some story? Oh, niece. Hello there, Space Cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to, proper, to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Tell me about the travelers' instruments. Oh, sure. I made all their instruments, you know. Let's see. There's Church drums, Rybeck's banjo, and Gabro's flute. And Feldspar, uh, Feldspar's harmonica. Of course, those Feldspar's have been missing for a long time. Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Anyway, you hear music in space. That'll be one of the space program's other travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. Nice to meet you, niece. I think that's how you spell it. It'd be kind of weird to say good niece, you know? Tephra. Hello, astronaut. It isn't my favorite troublemaker. Let's put the radio. Troublemaker. We wanted to play. We wanted to play hide and seek, but Marine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey. Can we use your signal scope? Can we? Can we please? We'll even let you be it. Sure. Let's play. Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules. Galena and me will hide with these radios, and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. Alright, press Y to equip signal scope. Okay, there's one. The other. Let's see if I can find this one. Oh, he's all the way up there. Okay, there's a way around it. Ah, that's how you zoom in. Cool. There we go. Almost forgot about the jump mechanic here. Dot, dot, dot. You found me. Yep, sure did. Nope. Can't climb her up. Uh, let's see if there's a safer way down. Yep. Off that route. And into a bush. Now, I'm gonna find this old booger. Ah, there he is. So they're on the ledge. I think it'd be better just to drop down instead of trying to jump across. He got me. But I'm the last one. I win. I was to play again when you get back and face the game. You got it. Just forgot a way back.
Okay, Observatory 0GK. That sounds interesting. Spin out. Fishing round, fishing round. She can help smooth past the time. You leaving the crater? Guess we'll all be a little busier without you around the window. Mm -hmm. That big water planet, giant steep. That's where I'd go. How's that? One time after the rest of the village had left to sleep and it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Gabro told me about their first trip to Nashville. They landed their ship easily enough in the waves, but I couldn't see too far down on the account of how murky the water, mark water was. I guess. Too dark. Gabro wants to see what lay beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. Travel down and down, but suddenly, Gavro didn't go any further. So the more, yeah, Giant Steep has a current you can't pass through, and they're estimating how boring this would be. Ha! Ah, there's a little reading. Tell me more. I will. I was just pausing dramatically. As though exercising the will of its own, water was refusing to let Gavro go any deeper. It held Gavro back. Almost as if it were trying to protect them from something. And then, in the terrible darkness, Gabro saw it. Tentacle of the hideous beast. Ah! Is that all true? Was there Safwine involved during Gabro's campfire story? I think we'll go look at it. Is it all true? Heard it, heard it from Gabro himself. Gabro can be a little fanciful, sure, but they ain't a liar. But they ain't a liar. I mean, probably, anyway. I guess if you want to know if the story is entirely true, you can go see Giant Steeps for yourself. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Alright, where's the Zero G cave? I want to explore that. That seems interesting. Man, this is so pretty. Oh. That looks neat. What is that? Danger! Inside the fence is a pocket of ghost matter. A strange and dangerous substance that's invisible to the naked eyes. The good news is that you can detect ghost matter with a camera. Huh. Moving through ghost, ghost matter is uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt, if you hurt, uh, if you hurt yourself fooling around. Horn fells. Oh, what's that kid doing? Is there a rocks in that? Arc Rose. Hi, astronaut. You know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence? Gosson said it used to be bigger when they were hatching. When they were a hatching. Because ghost matter evaporates. I just. It just takes a super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when, I, when I'm a grown up. Ghost matter is awesome. Ghost matter is super cool. It will burn the heck out of you. Shouldn't be throwing rocks in there, ghost matter is dangerous. You know ghost matter is how Tekti lost their foot, right? Yeah, I heard touching it hurts so bad it feels like your whole hand's on fire. Try not to walk into any in space, okay? That sounds bad and painful. Thank you, Arcopes. Ooh, camera. Take a snapshot. Ah, that's what it looks like. Neat. It's almost like they got a whole, uh, ooh, there's a big old cave down here. A pit. We may explore that eventually. Zero G cave. Hey, come say hi to your old flight coach before you launch. I've got zero G training set up if you want to get, if you want a refresher. Awesome. Okay, for sure, man. Ah, hey there, Gosson. Hi, I thought I might see you before the big launch. Nerves getting the better of you? Right, like you weren't nervous for your first flight. I'm a little nervous, yeah. Are you kidding? I'm a natural at this. <laughs> I'm a natural. Is that so funny? I seem to recall the first time you strapped on a jetpack. We had to come fish you out of the crater near the South Pole. So listen, there's a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment. Set up down in the Zero G cave, and I need and it need of repairs. If you're looking for a little last minute Zero G practice, head down and 
the lift and into the cave. Or don't. So long as you're confident you can make ship repairs in space. One repaired satellite coming up. Now I'm ready for the review. Yeah, let's let's fix the satellite. Cool. Get to it and try not to concuss yourself right before your first launch. Neat. Thanks, Gotham. Where's the blue sand? Juicin? Just on. Oh wow, those look like stars. Very nifty. Flashlight? No flashlight, I just have to. Ooh. Ah, there we go. Click in the right stick for a flashlight. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Let's see, pickaxe in a barrel. Nice. Zero G cave. Let's suit up. Grab all the stuff. Up thrust, down thrust. Ah. Uh, we also got horizontal thrust. Neat. Well, that doesn't go anywhere. That's caved in. Tough. Hey, hey. Nice of you to drop down. I'm getting some zero G time in. Give me the dirt. Guess where I'm going today. Ah. Uh, Give me the dirt. Some fresh dirt? Not much happening down here lately. Let me think. Come to think of it, Tektite saw something crash outside the village crater earlier. That's new and different. Oh hey, how about that? Yeah, they were on the fire watch with the old scout launcher and saw smoke. So they went to check it out. Safety first, right? No, I'm kidding. I said that to Tektite once. Pretty rude how long they laughed for, if you ask me. Sorry to interrupt you. Just getting some zero time. Yeah, zero G time in. So you're going in there in the cave? Hmm. What? No, I'm fine. Great, great and fine. You don't look fine. Well, you know I hate the cave, so I don't know why you're making me talk about it. Phew. Now I've got my hand. Now I've got hand sweats. Uh, guess where I'm going today? Oh no. No, 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 no. No way. You want to run off into space? That's your business. But don't make me, you know, think about it. Bad enough, we got this weird cave down here. Oh, oh. Yep, there is zero G's right here. Well, I mean, there's 0.4 G's, I guess. Cool. Neat. I wonder how high I can jump now. Yeah! I can jump pretty high. Neat. I think it's also neat that, uh, whoa. Hello. Let's see, zero three repaired. Laugh on, press A to match velocity. And we'll get a little bit closer to it. Match some more velocity. And we're gonna repair it. Very neat. Okay, ah, there's another one. Ah, come on now. And one thing that's absolutely neat about space is that you have to counter every force that you put into movement because like you see how I'm like stationary with this uh well just about stationary with this arm but yet everything else is moving it's very very neat I hear some more sizzling somewhere where could it be If you go up, you have to go down. Yeah, that's just so cool. Ah. Is 
so yeah, it takes, it's pretty neat, you know, trying to go from one spot to another in space. Because everything is relative, like, you could have, you know, the Earth, right? And then you could be right outside, you know, Earth's atmosphere. And think that, you know, oh yeah, this is normal, 100% normal. Nothing wrong with this. And then you go to like try and line up trajectories with like another planet or uh, the moon or whatever, and you're just going so much faster than what you actually think. It's super neat. I wouldn't mind being an astronaut myself, but you know, just being out in space with like absolutely nothing around and with nothing to tie you back to Earth is, like, absolutely stressful, to me anyway. I, I would, I think I would lose my mind if I had to do a spacewalk. Actually done. Of course, it'll be a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space, but just remember your training and try not to hit anything big. I can see you're itching to get off this rock, so get to the launch codes. So go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there. And hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into training you. Got it? Absolutely, Gossin. Yeah, Gossin. Wonder how he lost his eyeball. Ghost matter. Oh, observatory is that way. What is this thing? What is this perch? What is that perch? What are all these perches about? Oh, we're in. Hmm. Oh, hello, astronaut. This is good weather for lunch, right? That's lucky. What are you up to? I'm using the signal scope to pick up sounds from distant planets. It's set to the Outer Wilds Ventures frequency so I could pick up the Traveler's music. Last night, I heard Ryback's banjo coming from Brittle Hollow. I hope that means they're safe. I can hear different planets, too. It depends on what time of day or night it is, since... Different planets are in the sky at different times. Signal scopes are cool. I guess so. Oh, getting close to one. Oh. Huh. on fire up there. Oh, it's a moon. Put a little campsite on the moon. Neat. What else you got? I guess that's too far away to discern. Ah, oh, it's like a harmonica. Super neat. Oh, that's the actual music of the place. Got it. <laughs> I thought I was looking for a banjo. Oh, we didn't check out this big uh, pad up here. See what's up. I saw smoke coming from Young Bark Crater up north and figured I should go check it out. You can use the scout launcher, just please don't break it while I'm gone. Tech type. No my ruins. I think that's how you pronounce it. No my no me. Quantum Grove Crater. Geyser Mountains. Young Bark Crater. Oh, I guess this is a scout launcher. Sure. Uh, let's launch it. Oh, that's why they call that Geyser Mountains. Anything else neat in there? Mm -hmm. 
And then where is this place? I think that was a quantum grove. Yeah, I think that's quantum grove. Oh, I can hold it. I can rotate the camera too. Yeah, that looks like Quantum Grove. Neat. Then what was this? No, my ruins. Ah! Click, 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 and this one's young bark crate. Oh uh, yeah, there's definitely smoke coming from it. Huh. Neat. And then back around. Full circle. Neat. But we have to get to the observatory. Ah, uh, so that's how you walk. Anybody live here? Launch tower. I'll come back to that. Mm. Hornpills, Gossen, Feldspar, Esker, and Sleep. I guess one of them's taking the picture because there's five names. Art of Wilds Ventures founding members. Clockwise from top left. Okay. Hornfells, Gossen, Slate, and Felspar. I guess Esker's the one taking the picture. Art of Wilds Ventures, Timberherd's first and only space program. Was founded to explore the furthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Hearthian to be intentionally launched into space. We completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Adler, Adler Rock. Or Adler Rock? Adler Rock. Yeah. They don't really say anything. This remarkably intact statue was carved by Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur. Note the decoratively decorative jewelry that has been carved as part of the antlers. Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in the solar system, we still have no idea where its species came from or what happened to them. Huh, neat. How? Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut launch day at last, huh, buddy? It's the translator's... Ah, it's the translator tool's inaugural flight, too. I'm so excited, it's making me nauseous. Just think, you'll be able to translate any my text you want anywhere you are. The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? Aha. Oh, jeez. Do not break it. <laughs> Uh, ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous. I'm not even the one going into space. How are you feeling? I'm excited. I'm terrified. We'll go excited. Good. You've only been waiting for this day since you, since we were hatchlings. I can't wait to see all your training pay off. So, what's the dirt? You here to see the new Nomai statue? New statue? Of course. Just here for a launch, goat. Uh, we'll do, of course. Hey, I'm... I knew you'd want to see it before you headed off. Hornfell's just finished prepping it for the display today. Amazing, isn't it? Makes me wish we could see what a real live Nomai looks like. But I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. It looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue ever found, you know? And for how old it is, it's in great shape. Ah, oh, jeez. I go a little... I get... Uh, I got a little carried away there. Go on, you have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? Thanks, Al. Cool. Let's see, get that satellite out there. 
Hmm, what's up with the balls? Watch closely. These balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes the spooky motion? The answer is the moon! The set orbits are planted, the ad uh, Adel Rock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions, in fact. It's pulling on you right now. It's kind of like the same with our moon and uh, oceans of water with waves. It's very... that's that's how it works. That's why we have waves, that's why we have low tide and high tide. Because the moon would sit there and rotate around our planet, and then it would actually pull the waves with it with its own gravitational pull. It's very neat. Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the sun, ter the sun runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. Okay. It's a show-in progression of a star. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. The star becomes a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. Hmm. If the star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on Schertz's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. Ah, neat. Oh, what are you? This anglerfish specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to Dark Bramble. It appears well suited to living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. Does look like an anglerfish. Kinda looks very spooky. What's this thing? What's that thing? Oh, it looks like a... Huh. Maybe something we could check out on one of the other planets. This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion that was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Sure. Oh, that's neat. Huh. So I'm standing on the wall. Good to know. Good to know. This crystal was taken from an... Oh. Same thing as before. Okay, cool. Just on a different side. I think that's one of those scouts that we were talking about. The Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to our Outer Wilds ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the little scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantaneous, almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. Huh. It would be pretty neat to have something like that. Oh, I guess that's a skeleton of one of the Nomai. What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possess antlers, and quite unusually, only three eyes. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, shows that Herthians could have descended from Nomai and the ancestors. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from, or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. For sure. Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This, is, this is decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system. Which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe, or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system, or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further xenoarchaeological expeditions. Oh, we got a little translator. Well, let's read what we can read and then we'll pick that up. This piece of Nomai writing was essential to depict it, to deciphering their unique languages. Although its text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch trends to be written from a different author. Hmm. Cassava. We're nearly ready. Felix and I finished 
construction. She says calibrating the device won't take long. Felix. Fortunately, the adder, uh, the Adel rocks lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. I uh, wonder what they're searching for. Super neat. Huh. What's this thing? The strange rock moving around in this grotto appears to react to conscious observ uh, observation. The level-headed among us realize there must be some sort of optical illusion at play, but Gabro claims the rock exists in all possible states until it's observed. Whatever that means. Whatever is actually happening, both sides of this debate agree the effect is extremely creepy. And there it goes. And there it is. There it goes. And there it is. That's very neat. It's pretty neat that it just stays in that one little area too. What's up here? Man, learning so much about space and just these this uh, species solar system. It's very neat. Ooh. Oh my. Oh, cool. We actually see what's going on out here. Huh. So we got the Hourglass Twins. What is that thing? Oh, what is that thing? Oh, it disappeared. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. What is that thing? It doesn't have a name by it. Let's see, Brittle Hollow. And Hollow's Lantern. Why is that moon like shooting off rocks? Like volcanic rocks. It's really weird. Okay, Giant's Deep. Uh oh. There's a picture of the satellite when it was whole, but now it's in pieces. Interesting. Hourglass Twins? I wonder why they called that. Maybe because of all the sand on one side. Dark Bramble. Yeah, it looks like a bramble, that's for sure. Kind of like a thicket of briars, you know, bramble. That's that's what they mean by bramble. What is this thing? Is this a random sun something? No idea. Oh! There's this volcano. There's a volcano, uh, volcanic rocks right there. Huh. And then they're right here. How did they just travel all the way out here? No, because it's following, following the the, tra the trajectory of that. So how do they get all the way out here? I guess there's something that we can look into. Neat. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations, and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with a Know My Translator tool. I confess, I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Know My. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? I'm going to learn more about the Know My. I'll meet up with other travelers. I'm going to go somewhere no one's gone before. I like that answer. I think I'll start with something small. I don't know. I'm gonna wing it. I'm just gonna wing it, guys. Just winging it out in space. No idea what's going on. Planning to follow in the footsteps of Felspar and the great Outer Wilds Ventures tradition, are you? I might have guessed. Well, see if you can't put that translator tool of yours to good use while you're out there. Well then, looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. Let's get off this rock. I'm ready to die in space. I'm ready to die in space. I'm not one for superstition, but that's kind of unlucky to say before launch. At any rate, here are the launch codes. Try not to worry too much. Our ships are very, are every bit as safe as Slate could have persuaded to make them. Best of luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Hmm. 
I just might. Oh, what's this picture of? Is it just a star map? Hmm, this is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. In fact, the further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. But if that's true, was everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? Yeah, that's kind of one of the things with the uh, Big Bang Theory. Um, was just that it was just like a, it was kind of, it was kind of like the, uh, supernova, you know, just like this one mass of whatever it was just, you know, came, just kept on getting denser and denser and denser and then just exploded into like a multitude of different universes. It's very, it's a very interesting thing, the Big Bang Theory. But then from that, you know, came about, you know, organisms, then evolution, and all this other stuff. You'll learn about it in school. It's pretty neat. And it's very interesting. Oh, I can't move. Oh, what are you doing? Oh. Well, hello. That's everything I did. Are you wiping my brain clean? Okay. That's cool, I guess. I guess I'll just be on my way. Oh. Hey, hey. So, did you get the... Did you get a good look at that Nomai statue? The statue looked at me and opened its eyes. The statue was glowing. Why was it glowing? Whoa, 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 the statue was doing what? So his eyes open, and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around? I mean, like, you mean like a hallucination. Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch, like, medically speaking? You know what? Don't worry about it. No, that statue is definitely weird. Yeah, it's definitely weird, dude. I mean, if you're saying it happened, then I guess maybe it did, but why? Hornfields tried everything to get that statue's eyes to open, and nothing like this ever happened to them. I don't think you're going to get any answers from the museum statue, but Gabbro, uh, Gabbro said they were going back to Giant's Deep. Don't know which island they're on, though. Maybe they'd be able to tell you more? On the other hand, Gabbro's, you know, Gabbro. So maybe better, <clears throat> maybe you'd be better off searching for more info on your own. Geez, no, I'm really jealous you're going into space. Hey, see if you can use your translator tool to find out more about the statue, okay? Good luck and safe flying. Thanks, Hal. All right, cool. Well, let's go back. Let's go back to the uh, spaceship and see what's up. Oh, what's this? It's like a random log file. Can I use this? Ooh, I can. Where do it go? Let's just come down here. Ah, uh, everything's getting a little blurry. It's blurry and dark. Why is everything blurry and dark? Oh, it takes me back to the village. Interesting enough. Where does this go? No. What? Where am I going? What am I doing? Where am I going? I can't see! Oh, I got a flashlight. I guess I could've used that. But you know. Man, this music is pretty. I love this music. Let's go back up. Oh, where does that go? Oh, we'll see where that goes. I know I'm kind of wasting time and, you know, not going off into space on a game that, you know, requires me to be in space. But uh, I'm just doing a little bit of exploration. Just making sure I get the understand exactly what's going on here. 
So just, you know, going gung-ho into space. It's a pretty neat system they got there. Okay, so yeah, it just takes me back to the village. Well, that's cool. I don't need to be up in the village just yet. I gotta go to space, guys. I gotta go fly my rocket ship. Let's activate that leaf. Anybody living here? No? Anything here from you? No. Oh! Hello, little buddy. Hello, astronaut. Are you going into space today? Are you going into space and never coming back like Felspar did? Why? That's pretty disturbing. Don't worry, I'll come back. Why? Yeah, um, Hornfell says Felspar went away into space and didn't come back. Hornfell says Feldspar was the best pilot ever, but no one knows what happened to them. Hornfell's probably shouldn't be telling you stuff like that. That's something I want to think about right now. But if Feldspar disappeared, you might disappear too, right? I don't understand this kid's got like four eyes and all that, but just just his, his words is creepy enough, you know? Not as good as Feldspar, so you should be really careful not to get lost. I will try my best, Tefra. I will, I will try my best. I have been known to get lost several times. And I do mean several times. Eh, I don't want to go up just yet. So here's an axe. Can't take that with me. And I think there's something that I missed before getting to the uh, observatory and getting the launch codes. I think I missed something up here. Yeah, here we go. Who is this little fella? Micah. Hey, it's you. So you said you're blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you going into space? Aren't you? You better not have changed your mind. Hey, I'm still going. I want to practice with a pro before I leave. I hear you and Slate beefed up the model ship. Can I see it? I think I'll stroke his ego a little bit, yeah. Ah, you're just saying that. What if you really want to practice with me? I guess I could help you out a little. Try to land on one of the geyser pools. Show me what you got. Sure. Okay, so we got... It's basically the same thing as jetpack. Cool. Ah, yeah. There we go. Okay, cool. And then we reset. And then we leave. What a landing. I guess that's why Slate lets you fly the real thing, huh? Yep, sure is Micah. Alright, cool. I think I explored just about everything else on in this crater. So, now it's time to get on our rocket ship. Blast off. Go check out some cool things. da 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 I wonder, it's like that wasn't on the uh, star chart, and now it's gone. Neat. Entering the launch codes. We're going on a trip in this rusty rocket ship. I'm probably gonna die. <laughs> Because I have no idea what's going on. Alright, cool. Now let's view the entries. Village, zero G cave. Okay, so there's a cave at the very center of timber herd used by Outer Wilds Advent Outer Wilds Ventures. Training astronauts successfully repaired another satellite for gossip. One and only Herthian village, as well as the main source of explosions on this planet. Know my statue in the observatory, opened its eyes and looked at me. I saw strange glowing lights and my own memories flashed before my eyes. And also the statue has never opened its eyes before. So, let's go back to the map. New entries. Know my text in the observatory talks about calibrating some sort of device on the paddle rock. Neat.
Hal says Gabbro went to Giant's Deep to try to learn more about the Nomai statue in the observatory. Okay. Ooh, what is that? Well, let's see. Why don't let's go to the moon? You know, check that out first, see what happens. Then we'll go further out into space. Okay, lift off. Three, two, one. Yeah. Oh, here's the moon. Ah, let's go down. Oh, gotta get closer to it. Up a little bit. Uh, okay. Let's rotate. Then. Uh, I don't want to go in too close. Too fast, should I say? Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. I probably shouldn't have stayed in that. Easy does it. Easy, easy. There we go. Cool. Some buckle. Let's check out some things here. Unidentified signal nearby. Freeze detected. Oxygen tank refilled. Oh, Fesker. Oh, hey, it's you. Ground control didn't tell me you were launching. Long time no see. Actually, I guess it's been a long time since I've seen anyone. Don't the other travelers come by? The lunar outpost was more saw more traffic when our ships were less sophisticated, and needed more frequent repairs. Nowadays, it's mostly used to keep a set of eyes on things. Sometimes Strick comes by to say hi, but Gavro is Gavro, and you know how Rybeck feels about unnecessary space flight. Don't go. Uh, I mean, anything else you wanted to ask? Uh, was that you whistling? Probably, or actually, definitely. The other travelers carry instruments, so they don't bother whistling. But you can pick up their music on a signal scope, you know. The best spot for that is the North Pole. Great reception. North Pole is marked in red on your mini-map, but the Adelbrog is a pretty small moon, really. Just go north, you can't miss it. What is this place? Haha, uh -huh, very funny. Oh, stars above. You're serious, aren't you? That's just depressing. Sigh. Welcome to the Lunar Outpost, which apparently the space program doesn't bother to teach anyone anymore. When we first started Outer Wilds, travelers used to bring their ships here all the time for repairs. Our spacefaring technology has improved loads since then, but the older ships tend to uh, fall apart a lot. Like more than they do now. Using the outpost cut down on the number of launches and landings taking place in the village, and also the number of fires. Nowadays, though, it's mostly just me up here raising saplings from timber herd, keeping an eye on things. Okay, let's see, got that, got that. Seems lonely up here. A little. I'm in touch with ground control, Hornfells and Gossin, mostly. And they radio up to chat now and then. When ground control forgets I'm up here, and they usually do, I launch my little scout at the village. They forget about you? I don't blame them, for one. I don't check in as often as the other travelers, since I'm always in one place. But it's not so bad here, really. At least it's peaceful and quiet. You don't always get that in our solar system, let alone in our village. Uh, let's try this again, but let's uh, ask that other question. You spy on us? What? No! It's not spying, it's... It's one-way communication. That none of the villagers know about. Because I've never told them. <laughs> so, hey, hey kids, just remember, it's not spying. It's one-way communication that nobody knows about. <laughs> it's spying, guys. Don't... No use words like that to get out of being told that you're... Spying on people. Ah, let's just get up out of here. Back to no oxygen. There's our sun. At least in this solar system, anyway. Topping off on fuel and oxygen. 
Buffalo. We can check out these other craters and stuff while we're here. Ah! Oh, whoa, what's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Aye! Tink, tink, too. Cool. Let's check this out. Maybe something noteworthy. Ah, I landed like halfway in a crater. That is a terrible landing. I have done a terrible job. I am the worst space parking person ever. Well, let's check this out. This seems interesting. Huh. Ah. Let's put this on. That looks like the sun. Yeah, that's the sun. Neat. And then, ooh, what's that? It's going around and around in circles. Is it going to lock onto it? Or is it not? Okay, so that's something unidentifiable. That's cool. I can dig it. What's that? Oh. So I guess that would be Brittle Hollow. Okay. And what's this one? You know, the sun is changing awfully fast. I guess that's Giant Steep that we're looking at. Oh! The inner noise is on it. That is super neat. Super cool. I'm going to just leave that alone. That is super cool. Oh, what is all this under here? There's a tree. Let's use this translator right here. Let's see. Cool, yes. I was upstairs testing the eye signal locator, and it can hear and follow the signals from the sun, giant steep, and brittle hollow. However, something strange is happening when I ask the eye signal locator to follow the eye signal. The device's indicator rotates wildly and never points to just one direction. Felix, I see. I most, li most likely calibrated the locator incorrectly. Privet, my apprentice. And I will make adjustments and try again. An update. Disappointingly, everything is correctly calibrated after all. <laughs> Cassava. It happens to me to posit, uh, to pose it this. Back on that. Pose it this, my friends, but I believe we need to build a more sophisticated device if we want to find the exact location of the eye of the universe. Huh. Eye of the universe. Then we will build it. Oh, Thatch. Then we will build it. Don't lose hope, Cassava. Don't lose hope, Cassava. Our search for the eye is what our clan... Is what brought our clan to this place. We won't give up so easily. <clears throat> okay, going back off of this tangent. Uh, okay. Thatch. This is a curious result. It's possible the eye has stopped calling out its signal. Hmm. <clears throat> Very neat. Huh. Let's take this scroll. Those are scrolls. Neat. Where should this new, more sophisticated locator be built? It may need to be larger than this eye signal locator is. Oh boy. Anona and those of us originally stranded on the Ember Twin built a quantum moon locator there. But the heart of the sun made its construction challenging. I wouldn't recommend building on that planet. That was from Coolius. Plume. Southern glacier on the brittle hollow has ample available space. I could construct a new building to house this proposed locator. Felix. Yes, let's build there. I imagine our young friend Kanoi would enjoy that immensely. He's always held a great interest in the eye, especially for a child born so long after the crash. I'll begin construction on Brittle Hollow South Pole immediately then. 
Okay, cool. So plume goes to the south pole. Huh. Okay, wow. Wow. I've seen this rune in other travelers' pictures, but seeing it for myself, it's really old, isn't it? Oh wow, this is the coolest day of my life. Okay, um, time for some official notes. So this is some kind of nomad locator. You can point out the different planets, which is incredibly cool, by the way. But from what little I can understand of the writing here, I think it was built to try and find something specific. I'm not sure. I also was able to translate something about the South Pole of Brittle Hollow, so I'll fly there to see if I can learn more. Yep, just gonna get back in the old ship and take off. Totally safe. Mostly stay. Oh, stars above. Okay. Now, was there another scroll somewhere? Because when there was like another one somewhere around here. No, that was it. Okay, cool. Refill on oxygen real quick. So, Brittle Hollow. Let me get out of here. Where's me ship? There it is. Ooh, it's dark. So dark. Okay, so where to now? Oh boy, we got a little bit. See the entry, growing crop of trees, they seem to be doing okay, but they've probably been alone on the moon for a long time. Okay, Esker says the Adelok's North Pole marked on the red minimap. It's a great spot to listen for other travelers' music with a signal scope. Great. Okay, check that out. Firebag headed to Brittle Hollow to investigate something that Omai were doing at the South Pole. No my device created to pinpoint the source of distant signals, and oh my, were disappointed by their failure to detect the signal from something called the Eye of the Universe. Southern Observatory. But oh my, decided to build a larger, more sophisticated eye signal locator on Brittle Hollow's south pole. Okay, cool. So I can go to Brittle Hollow, find Ryback, and then hit up the Southern Observatory, and go check out the Lunar Lookout, which is on the North Pole. So I'm already on this moon, I am going to go to the North Pole, which is marked in red. Oh, I don't want to go too far away. Ah, ooh, ah, what? oh no, this is what I'm saying, like, this is space travel. Oh my goodness, ah, why? Oh goodness gracious me. Okay. Alright, ah, uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, landing mode. Okay, can I, if I just, no, I probably have to like jump over there. Yeah, yeah, easy, easy does it, easy does it, there we go. I'm gonna get up out of here, go check out the lookout. Ah, too fast. Okay, that's Grisimo scope log. Day 48, still not picking up Rybeck's banjo from Brittle Hollow. I'm sure they're fine, but I'll feel better once I can hear their music. Day 51, listen to the church play for a while today. Unrelated, someone should tell Porphy and Gossen their flirting is not suitable for an aerial, from an aerial perspective. Oh. Day 55, banjo music coming in loud and clear today. Sounds like Rybeck's doing okay. That oaf, I was worried. Today I thought I heard something strange. I don't know. It was probably nothing. Day 70. No, it's back again today, too. That thing strange is coming from Timber Hearth. Day 76. Okay, I know this is crazy, but the sound from Timber Hearth sounds exactly like Feldspar's harmonica. But Feldspar disappeared in space ages ago. It can't be them. Day 88. It's still there. This is creepy. Maybe my signal scope is broken. I better talk to Nice. Ooh. 
My son is really red. Uh, I also like how light works here. Because, like, it isn't just, like, you know, straight top down. Because it's all coming from that sun. So, like, if it's not, if the sun is not facing it, eh, there's not going to be any light there. Which is kind of how space works. That's how light works. It's super cool. Alright, cool. Um, you know what? Since we're closest back to, uh, to Hearth, as they call it. Let's go check out Hearth. Maybe there's something we can check out on uh, Geyser Mountains. Easy now. You know, I don't think there's actually anything in Geyser Mountains. Doesn't look like it. But there is this big crater, though. What is this crater? Up a little bit more? Up a lot more. Okay. Huh. Ooh, what is that down there? That looks interesting. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Little taps here and there. Easy now. Easy, easy. There we go. Alright, cool. Let's go explore this. Ooh. It's got some more know my stuff. Oh, there's door. There's stuff I can translate. Let's translate stuff. Mining site 2B. So there's more mining sites? Let's check this out. Huh. Why did the music pick up like that? Oh, there's no my skeleton. I wonder if it's because I just found something in a tomb. I think that may be it. Let's translate this. Oh, I know. I'm still amazed by how much ore the Ash Twin project requires. Psyche, isn't this the ore from the remaining towers being built on Ash Twin? The completed towers I've seen are quite large. Oh, I know. No, the material from those towers is all being taken from Ash Twin. The ore we're mining here will be used to craft an immensely thick protective shell that will physically seal off the chamber inside Ash Twin's core. Huh. Let's see. Coleus, I'm relieved by our clan's decision to use Timber Hearth. Why is there rumbling? Ah, it's gonna collapse on me. I need to get out of here. I don't think I can move fast enough. Oh, that's just like an explosion. That does not sound good. Explosion. I am dead. So there's two. I am dead. I am super duper dead. Oh, what? That's weird. What is this? Yep, oh, that's everything that just happened. Kind of like before. Yeah, so I gotta talk to him for a minute. Got to talk to everybody at the village. Huh. Oh, so wake up here. Hey, you ready to get this thing off the ground? Ship's all filled up and ready to go. Did did I just die? Let's just go. Ready if you are, you sure you fixed? Whoa, bad dream or something? I still look half asleep, but that's a negative on being deceased. I know it's tradition to sleep out under the, under the stars the night before a launch, but if you ask me, it makes you a little bit jumpy. Oh, hold up. You're going to want to get the lunch codes from the observatory. I already got them from the observatory, remember? How did it get back here? Didn't I already lift off? Wait, did I just die, or... Trust me, 
with the modifications I've made to those rockets, there's no way I would have missed that. I want to ask how you got the launch codes, but since you since you have them, get a move on. I wanted to see whether the new cockpit says stays attached during liftoff. That's promising. Thanks. I'm gonna just gonna wait around to see if the cockpit you know still stays attached after liftoff. All right, so you still need to check out the uh, those ruins. While I'm here, may as well check out some other stuff. Ooh, got more stuff. All right, now let's view the entry. Look out platform with a spectacular view of the solar system. Expert uses their signal scope here to keep tabs on the other travelers. Expert signal scope log reports harmonica music coming from somewhere on Timber Earth. The claim it sounds like Feldspar's harmonica, but Feldspar disappeared in space ages ago. Okay, I know my mind or from this site. To craft a protective shell designed to physically seal off the central chamber inside Ash Twin. There's more to explore here. The central chamber inside Ash Twin was physically sealed off by an immensely thick protective shell. Okay, so we're gonna have to check out Ash Twin, but before that, we're gonna need to explore some more of those ruins. And we can also check out some other things. Well, you know what? That's you know what? I'm just gonna end it right now because we got about an hour into this game maybe a little bit more so let's end it right here um i really like the mechanic that it has to where you die and then you just start back there i'm not 100 percent sure if you start back there every single time or if you make some kind of progress in the game you start out somewhere else but if this is how the game is going to be then that'll be really neat um but yeah i also like flying in space you know and having to I, I know it kind of goose, goosed the uh, moon a couple times, but it is what it is, you know, trying to fly, fly in space. There's a whole science behind it. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys liked the video, hit that thumbs up. If you guys want to see more of this video, uh, hit subscribe and it'll tell you when the next one comes out. So, see, see you guys in the next one. Bye.